Welcome to Birmingham Snow Hill, opened in 1987 and managed by West Midlands Railway. Today we are travelling on board Chiltern Railways and their Class 168 diesel multiple unit to Leamington Spa on a service for London Marlow. Currently Birmingham Snow Hill sees four West Midlands Railway trains per hour in each direction and one Chiltern Railway service per hour to London Marlow, as you can see on the display board up there. Our train was the 1611 to London Marlborough. Birmingham Snow Hill has this longer walkway ramp that takes you down to the ticket office and barriers. Still abandoned, here are the Midland Metro platforms, which closed in 2015 when the line was extended to the library. And here we are now entering the main Birmingham Snow Hill complex. Ticket machines to the right, and a nice large indoor secure bike storage to the left. Here lies a newsagent, manned ticket office and ticket barriers. Our service currently shows as fun time. And we walk down a flight of stairs to platform 2 where our train awaits us. And now we can see our pair of class 168 diesel multiple units that will be taking us to Leamington Spa. These have a top speed of 100 miles an hour, and today's units has a class 168-3 on the front, and the class 168-1, which I will be sitting in, on the rear. Both having a top speed of 100 miles an hour, built by Adtrans Bombardier at Derby in the year 2000. These trains are in use on Chiltern Railways, mainline services, in London Marylebone, Aylesbury, Oxford, and Birmingham. These trains, nicknamed the Clubman, have been with Chiltern Railways since their introduction, apart from the class 168-3, that were actually converted from ex Transpennine Express Class 170s. Towards the end of the platforms lies the Midland Metro at Bull Street and these accessible lifts. Right, let's get on board, shall we? These trains feature vestibules with general waste and recycling bins, which is a nice touch. No first class here, all standard class, a nice modern 2x2 two two look with lots of bays, last refurbished in 2012. I think it's time to get a seat. This Bay of Ford looks particularly good at the moment, as it's quite quiet. Although these fabric seats look the part, they are very prone to getting stains. Legroom here is pretty adequate for a regional train. And padding here is also pretty damn good. There are two plugs per table, with extendable tables which is useful for laptops or other things like food and drink, as well as armrests and these nice plush headrests. Now moving into an airline style seat, there's one plug for two seats, as well as a rather flimsy tray table to say the least, and very good leg room for a non-priority seat. One thing you always get on Clubmans and Turbo Stars are sadly the vibrations, which are quite prominent, especially when there is no other noise present. before too long with some company, it was time to leave Birmingham Snow Hill, bound time. And after just two minutes, we arrive into Birmingham Moor Street, the second busiest station in Birmingham. After leaving Birmingham, we pass the incredible sights of Tisley, looking as glorious as ever. Here's one thing, don't have carpets as walls, they can pick up dirt very easily, but there was semi-decent Wi-Fi. And just about 10 minutes after leaving Mall Street, we put into the suburb of Solihull.
and next is the rural urban fringe town of Dorridge. And soon after leaving Dorridge, we see the children mainline countryside in all its glory as we pass through the lush Warwickshire fields. Although we were currently running to schedule, just outside of Hatton, we slowed down unexpectedly, perhaps due to a temporary speed restriction, meaning that we were a couple of minutes delayed at this point. And with St Mary's Church looming with its scaffolding in the background, we arrive into the newest station on the Chiltern Mainline, Warwick Parkway, opened in 2000. In 2012, Chiltern Railways added a 200 car capacity multi-storey car park to the site, as well as several other overflow car parks. Sadly, two of the overflow car parks are now disused. And also, while you're here, please do not forget to like and subscribe. I've been on YouTube for five years now and only have 300 subscribers, which is quite sad. So thank you. It means a lot. Shortly after departing Warwick Parkway, it was time to approach into Warwick Station. The historic market town is most famous for its castle, first built in 914 and then upgraded with William the Conqueror's invasion of 1066. Just before getting into Leamington, our stop, it's time for a toilet review. I chose a space saver toilet, which was so small I had to use the wide lens on my phone, which certainly does not look as good. To be fair, everything was pretty clean and working well, except for the dryer, which sadly, whatever I pressed, did not work. Apart from that though, everything seemed to be fine and working in a good order, but I would never really use space saver toilets and find the larger disabled toilets that are on board this train much nicer. And with that, we are now coming into Leamington Spa, where I am leaving this train. Of course, this service continues on to London Marlborough and takes around an hour and a half from this point. Well, our journey from Wall Street took around half an hour, and it was pretty comfortable. It wasn't too busy, as most people got off at Dorridge and Solly Hall. Overall, ride comfort was pretty good. These trains are pr pretty decent uh, as comfort goes, and as ride quality goes, although can be a bit noisy with vibrations. And for pricing, my ticket for one adult and any time day single cost me £8.70, which isn't dreadful. Obviously with rail cards that could change and could even half if you're a child. Well, would I travel with Children Railways again? Apart from the fact I have no choice because I live on the Children Mainline, I think probably. I think that their silver sets, which I will be reviewing soon, are far better. But I think if you're on a 168 to London Marlborough, it is equally as good as the LNWR 350s and the Avanti West Coast 390s, although the refurbished ones are good. 
Price-wise, getting to London is far cheaper with Chiltern Railways compared to any other operator, so I would bear that in mind, although it does take slightly slower than Avanti West Coast. And with that, thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe for more reviews, such as the Chiltern Railways Mark III Silver Sets, which I will be reviewing sometime later this year. Bye-bye.